Once again, I'd like to thank everyone for coming. Those coming here for the first time, the Lord honor you, the Lord bless you. We want to celebrate our sister again. We thank God for 50 years. Glory to God. The Lord who has brought you this far, we add many, many fruitful years to you in the name of Jesus. So she's doing her Thanksgiving today. Let us all thank God for her. Like Brad John said, when you celebrate with those who are celebrating, you tap into that grace so that you can also have your own celebration in the name of Jesus Christ. So bow your head, ask the Lord to speak to you as I bring the word of God this morning. Ask the Lord to speak into your heart. Ask the Lord to send you a word. The word of God ministers grace. The word of God carries blessing. The word of God carries favor. The word of God carries power. Say, Father, send me your word. Lord, send your word to heal me. Send your word to deliver me. Send your word to bless me. Send your word to promote me. Somebody talk to the Lord right now. La karebo sin turiyaba. Linderebo sin turiyaba sin derebo. Thank you, awesome God. Thank you, King of glory. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Somebody shout amen. amen. We'll continue briefly with the series we have started two weeks or three weeks ago, which is finding a place of rest and fulfillment in God. Can we say that together? Finding a place of rest and fulfillment in in God. And we have established that place is a place of fellowship with God. A place of intimacy with God. Christianity is a calling into fellowship. So we call it into fellowship. If you are not in fellowship with Christ, you are not in a walk with him. And if you are not in a walk with him, you cannot have the influence of divine life in your life. And that makes Christianity very frustrating as some people are experiencing it today. Because many are satisfied because they go to church. Many are satisfied because they are very active in church. But if the foundation is not in place, there is nothing you do with God that can bless you. And that foundation is the foundation of fellowship. And that fellowship is fellowship in the word of God, fellowship in prayer and worship, and fellowship in your service and obedience to God. So this morning we are going to look at a brief story from Luke 10, 38 to 42. Luke chapter 10. Verses 48, 38 to 42. Glory to God. Somebody shout hallelujah. Remember the Bible says, if the foundation be destroyed, the righteous can do nothing. I want to emphasize the life runs on laws and principles. You will do yourself good, do yourself well, to mind the laws and the principles of God. If you walk against laws and principles, no prophet can help you. If you break divine laws and eternal principles, there are consequences. Glory to God. Let's read this. Want to go. Now it happened as they went that he entered a certain village. And a certain woman named Martha welcomed him into her house. Take note, this was talking about Jesus. Jesus, Martha and Mary welcomed Jesus into their home. In other words, they accepted Jesus into their life. As many of us have done. Verse 39. And she had a sister called Mary. Say with me, a sister called Mary. Who also sat at Jesus' feet and heard this word. Verse 40. But Martha was distracted. With months serving, and she approached him and said, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to serve alone? Is that not typical of women today? Oh, very, very typical. Oh, why am I in the kitchen alone? If the sister was not around, she is okay to be in the kitchen alone. But as long as the sister is reading the bedroom, oh, no, 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 no. Why should I be here alone? It's typical. Say, thank God for the women. 
Is she complaining in the presence of the master? I'm okay. Why should I be the one to it alone? Why should he sit down there and be watching TV? Why am I sweating in the kitchen? Glory to God. So you see that the life I've done, the, the things we see of old are the things that we are still seeing today. He said, but Martha was distracted with more serving. And she approached Jesus and said, Lord, do you not care that my sister has just left me alone in the kitchen? Therefore, tell her to come help me. She may just be making tea, but she need help. Not that she need help. Her anger is that the sister is just sitting down there doing nothing and I'm walking alone. Verse 41. And Jesus answered and said to her, Martha, Martha, you are worried and troubled about many things. Verse 42. He said, but one thing is needed. And Mary has chosen that good path, which will not be taken away from her. What is that good path? The path of fellowship. Sat with the master to receive wisdom, to receive understanding, to receive knowledge. The first and most important task we owe God is devotion and fellowship. If you look at what Jesus called distraction, it looks good. Jesus is in our hope. Jesus is in our life. And what he was doing was trying to bake for Jesus, make tea for Jesus, prepare rice for Jesus. It looks good. It's okay. But Jesus classified this as distraction. Why? Life demands priority. Say with me, priority. Life demands priority. That is good does not mean that you have time for it. That is good, it's okay, it does not mean that you should go for it. You cannot be available for everything because there must be priority. Your time is limited. Your life is limited. You can't clone yourself. You can't be at two places at the same time. You must give your priority to your fellowship with God. That is the foundation of a victorious Christian life. That is the foundation of a blessed life. That is the foundation of a fulfilled life. A life that we found rest. A life that we find peace. is a life that is first of all devoted to God in prayer, in fellowship, and in worship. It's not a prayer of looking for, well, give me job. Lord, I need job. Lord, I need a wife. Lord, I need a husband. We are talking about a prayer, a fellowship to know God and his ways. To understand the ways of God. To build intimacy with God. So that the presence of God can rub on you. Prayer. Let's not reduce prayer to give me. Those who want to use God to get will always be frustrated. They can't come to that place of rest and fulfillment. They can never. Be careful not to be too busy for God and lost your fellowship. There are pastors who are so busy, they no longer have time for fellowship. There are church workers who are so busy, they no longer have time for fellowship. Until your fellowship is in place, your service is not acceptable to God. It's first of all your fellowship. Jesus appointed the twelve that they might be with him. Because the place of fellowship is the place of influence, is the place of transformation, is the place of answers, is the place of change, the place of fellowship. Don't be too busy for God without having time of fellowship. Matter, matter, you are distracted about too many things. Let me tell you, friends, distraction is not always negative. Can we say that together? Distraction is not always negative. Matter was not doing anything wrong. At least you have a guest in your house. The savior of the world. The king of glory. Can't you quickly go and look for something to prepare for him? But Jesus, the wisest leader, the wisest man that ever said is distraction. Because there is time and place for everything. Mary chose the right thing to do. What was that right thing? Knowledge and understanding. 
Friends, give priority to things that you will live with in your life. Then if, it, if you are prepared tea for him that day, second, after one year or a few months, Jesus will not remember he drank tea there. He will not remember the type of tea. But what Mary sat down to learn, we live with her forever and create victory, create fulfillment, create dominion, create miracles in our own life. In other words, focus on the things that matters in life. There are things that are good, but they don't necessarily count or matter in life. Like mothers, I love women, I love mothers, I love wives. I try to really buy things for their children. Things, buy things, buy things. Teach, take time to teach them values. Take time to teach them principles. I can't remember when I was in primary six, the shirt my dad bought me. I can't remember. I can't remember. The, I knew he bought me things. I can't remember the color. I can't remember the size. But he told me, play where your part, there your own lies. That keeps to guide me in life. He said, never take what does not belong to you. I have never forgotten that. Teach your children values. Glory to God. Matter is Jesus into her life or into her house, but never had time for him. Are we not the same today? Many may be active in church, but they have no time for prayer. They are members of the ushery department. They are so busy, but they never have time for personal prayer and devotion. You can't find rest that way. You can't find fulfillment that way. He received Jesus into our life. He received Jesus into our home. But had no time to spend, to stay with Jesus, to learn, to learn. Friend, Christianity is, is like I always say, a church is a spiritual college. Can we say that together? A church is a spiritual college. Thank God for the lighting. Thank God for the dancing. Thank God for the worship. But you are here to learn. The difference between Gospel My Christian Church and University of Calgary is in the subjects we teach, the courses we teach. We teach faith here. They teach engineering 101 <laughs> or accounting 202. That's the difference. But we are all teachers. As a pastor, I'm a teacher. I'm an instructor. I'm a researcher. That's the difference. So you must come to church. It's not enough to receive Jesus. You must create time for devotion. You must create time for fellowship. Somebody shout hallelujah. Martha was distracted by the physical cares of this world. First things must come first. The spiritual must be your priority in life. I've seen people say, Pastor, you know, I no longer have time because of my schedule. The struggle will continue. Nothing will change. No matter how high you have built a building, if the foundation is wrong, they will bring that building down. They say, no, no, no. I've already spent $2 million on the foundation. No, that building is coming down because the foundation is corrupted. Your foundation is that place of fellowship and worship. Don't be in a hurry. Don't be too busy not to have time to spend with God. I'm talking about quality time. Quality time. And I've come to realize, if you know the importance, you always have time for it. If you know the importance, you always have time for it. As busy, go to 17th Avenue. On a weekday, 5 p.m. to the people are drinking. They are going to work the next day. <laughs> they, are, they are drinking every day. There's no restaurant you go on 17th Avenue that is empty, drinking bar that is empty on, on, on weekday. If they don't say we are going to work the next day because of that, we don't have time. Because it's important to them, they go. If you go to the gym, people are there every day. If you go to a stadium, people are there every day. Why? It's important to them. If you know the value, you will create time for it. I want to encourage you. Have value for the time you spend alone with God. Thank God we have prayer line every day. That is not enough. 
There is a place for physical and personal devotion. That is when God is able to touch and influence your life. And you don't only go there to be asking for things. Go there to worship him. Go there to consecrate yourself to him. Go, go there to ask him for wisdom, knowledge. Not material things. These the people are too focused on material things. If you have wisdom, you can create anything. If the blessings at work, you can accomplish many things. His favor is on you. You can do a lot. Those are superior to physical and material things. The place of fellowship. Ensure that before you offer physical and practical service to God, your devotion and fellowship is in place. Like I was sharing the first session, you are a music leader. You don't just come to come and see. We are not in New York. You have prayed. Oh God, Holy Spirit, take my voice. Master, I am not, no, use me. That is first your devotion. I say, but there is no, I can't climb the pulpit without first doing quality prayer at night. Saturday night is very special to me. Because I want to come here and minister to the people. You see that I cannot say what I have found out. It's not, it's not, it's not, that is not enough. It is spiritual. There is no physical thing you offer to God if you don't have time for God. We must remember that God is not hungry. <laughs> he said, if you don't praise me, I will raise up stones to praise me. No one can frustrate God. So it's a privilege to have opportunity to fellowship with God. Christianity is a calling. And you have been given this invitation. Not everybody is giving invitation. Glory to God. Now that you have been called a Christian, you have been given access to God. Take advantage of it through devotion. A place of fellowship. A place of time with God. A place of fellowship. A place of time with God. That's your priority. And this is one thing that you must not toy with. Otherwise, Christianity will be frustrating. Somebody say, God is so hard. God is so hard. Do you know people have time for God only when they're in trouble? There are some people only when they're in trouble that they know that prayer is important. Only when they're in trouble that they remember God to call upon the name of the Lord. But you should always remember to give God praise, to worship him. Because our primary assignment in life is to worship him. It was my said, the only thing God cannot do for himself is to worship himself and praise himself. That's the only thing. All the angels are in heaven 24-7 worshiping and praising this God. God loves to be praised. Why not recruit yourself as a worshiper of God? Do you know in worship you receive answers? In worship, God is revealed. In praise, God shows up. God shows up. Sometimes we don't even know what we need. We don't even know what we need. Glory to God. Let's look at Matthew 6, 30 to 33. Friends, we are talking about finding that place of rest. It's not that that place is, uh, is, uh, is void of challenges. It's not void of storms. But in the midst of the storm, because you carry God's presence, because you know how to talk to God, because you know how to be in a place of fellowship and devotion, fear leaves you. Fear leaves you. In the presence of God, fear bows. In the fierceness of God, worries and anxiety goes away. Be a man, a woman that knows how to spend time with God. When some say they are spending time with God, their phone is by their side. They are praying, God, thank you. Phone ring. Hello, hello. I'll call you back and pray. I pray, I'll call you back, I'll call you back. Is that devotion? No. That's not devotion. He said, now, if God so clothed the grass of the field, which today is, and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you, O you of little faith? And let me announce to you, the more time you spend with God, the more your faith comes alive. There is nothing mysterious about faith. The more you know God, the more your faith is stronger. And you can't know anyone without spending time with the person. 
It is intimacy that gives you knowledge of a, of a friend, gives you knowledge of a neighbor, and because of that, you cannot have confidence in that person, which is faith. Verse 31. Say, therefore, do not worry. Do you know why people don't have time to do for devotion? Because of worries. The cares of this world. We are to remember you are special to God. God loves you. Say with me, God loves me. You are special. You are not ordinary. You have no need to worry. And sometimes we run around, run around, run around, trying to figure things on our own, and we get into more trouble. The word of God says, He you know your ways, acknowledge him. And he will direct your path. How do you acknowledge it? Devotion. Know how to talk to God. No matter the troubles as in the world, no matter the pressure, no matter the stones thrown at you, there is a place that you can talk to God. That must be your hope. That must be your confidence. And the good news is that it can be in your bedroom. It can be in your washroom. It can be anywhere. God is present as long as you are giving your life to Jesus Christ. You have no reason to worry. But when you have no time for fellowship, you will always worry. Glory to God. He says, say, what shall we eat? What shall we drink? Or what shall we wear? Next verse. For after all these things, the Gentiles seek. The Gentiles means the world. That is the way they live. Friends, you are different as a child of God. You are different as a spirit man, a spirit woman. Your heavenly father, God is your father. Don't commonize that fatherhood, the fatherhood of God. Don't commonize it. Your attitude shows whether you commonize the fatherhood of God or you give it a special attention. God is your father. He said your heavenly father knows that you have need of all these things. When I was growing up, because of poverty, my dad would say, children don't eat sugar. Children, it was not because children don't eat sugar. They were, they were hiding it. Maybe if you get finished, they don't have money to buy another one. It was not true. Children can eat sugar. In fact, children need more sugar than adults. But my dad will lock it in his room. It's when you do good, they give you one cube for your Gary. <laughs> Glory to God. It was not because, but God is not like my biological father. He said, I know you need it. When Christmas comes, you want to buy new shoes. No, your shoe is still okay. You don't need it. It's because he has no money. Did you just say, son, I have no money. I know you need it. But God is not like them. God is not like us. He said, I know you need all these things. Say to me, that's a testimony. Say, that should give me confidence. Say, that should give me boldness. God knows my needs more than I ever need. More than I will ever know. Glory to God. He knows my needs. Say, your father knows that you have need of all these things. Verse 33, he said, but. But seek for the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Another translation, his ways of doing things. And I'm showing you one of these ways this afternoon. It is the way of devotion and fellowship. Glory to God. The way of devotion and fellowship. He says, seek for and his righteousness. And all these things that the world is hardly to get will be added to you. So that is a master key. Great time for God. Don't be too busy. You don't have to be an hour a day. Just start with five minutes a day. But be consistent. Be consistent. Set a time. At that time, you turn off your phone. You switch off your TV. It's the time I have with God. It can just be worship and fellowship alone. If you make it consistent, you will see the glory and the power of God. You will find peace and fulfillment. You will find out that fear will leave you, worry will leave you, anxiety will leave you. Somebody shout hallelujah. Today, by the grace of God, our sister is celebrating her 50 years birthday. And it's always good to be grateful. Always good to be grateful. One of the spiritual cancers in life is in gratitude. So it means gratitude. And the greatest thing to be grateful for is your life. <laughs> That's why the meaning of the Bible says, let everything that has bread do what? Praise the name of the Lord. No man can give life. Only God gives life. 
So we thank God for your life. We thank God for 50 golden years. Our prayer is that God will add many, many more years to you. I want to read Psalm 90 verse 12. Psalm 90 verse 12. Glory to God. Do we have it? Psalm 90 verse 12. Okay. Shall we read together? I want to go. It says, so teach us to number our days that we may gain a heart of wisdom. Another translation says that we may apply our heart unto wisdom. Glory to God. God has blessed you with these first 50 years. As the many more, as much as you may have, as many more years you desire, may the Lord grant them unto you. But I want to use this opportunity to speak to everyone here. He says, so teach us to know by our days that we may gain our heart unto wisdom. There is nothing in age. Age is a number. How many of us know that? It's just a number. Don't marry us again. I never, he's two, he's one year older than me, I won't marry her. It's not, if he's a good man, marry Age is just a number. What matters in life is wisdom and understanding. Say with me, wisdom and understanding. He said, teach us to know by our days that we may gain a heart of wisdom. I pray for you, my sister, that the remaining days of your life, the Lord will increase you in wisdom. And for everyone here, that God will increase you with wisdom. Wisdom is all that matters. Friends, you don't grow in wisdom by age. You don't graduate in school, but oh, this guy has been in University of Calgary now. He's now getting 60. Let's give him PhD. Does it work like that? No. As you grow in life, ensure that you are learning and acquiring wisdom. Because at the end of it all, it's wisdom that counts. There are nations now being ruled by 30 years old people. It's only Africa we still have 80 years old man ruling us. I don't want to offend anybody. There are Buharists here. But uh, <laughs> I have Buharists still around me. But in a serious nation, no 80 years old man should be ruling. Because as you get older, your capacity will get weaker. Let me not digress. I don't want to offend anyone. <laughs> but I'm not a Buharist. Glory to God. If you are from Nigeria, you know what I mean. What am I saying? No, wisdom and knowledge is acquired. It does not come with age. A man that wants to learn, a woman that wants to learn, we deliberately go for it and gain knowledge and understanding. Because you can see an 80 years old man behaving like a fool. You can see 30 years, 40 years, 60 years old man, they are thinking have never changed from the way they were thinking 20 years ago. And let me announce to you, if the same way you were thinking when you were 30 years old, is the same way you are thinking when you are 50 years old, you have lost 20 years. Because life is made for continuous advancement, continuous improvement, continuous increase. What did, what did uh, Paul say? He said, when I was a child, I behaved as a child. When I became a man, I did it, I did the way we childish this. And what makes somebody a man is the quality of his knowledge and wisdom, not age, not numbers. What am I saying this morning? Let us commit to learning. Let us commit to wisdom. Teach us to number our days that we may apply our heart unto wisdom. God has blessed you with 50 years. He's God, and I pray. I go beyond 50. Glory to God. But what matters the most, let's commit our life to the service of God and to the service of our fellow man. That's what gives value to life. That's what gives value to life. Commitment to the service of God and commitment to the service of your neighbor or your fellow man. Commit the remaining years Many, many years, God is going to bless you with, with how to serve God and how to serve your fellow man. And let me say this to everyone. When you see somebody celebrating, also remember 
Either you are going to your next one or you are approaching to the one that is celebrating. But we must all commit to improving ourselves. Nothing improves on its own. Is there anything that improves on its own? No. Like I always laugh, if you, are, if you go shopping, you just see a fine spot. As you want to turn, handicap, pregnant women. If it was not there, if that sign was not there, you would not meet that empty space. You will not meet it. Glory to God. So nothing of value is ever free. Wisdom and knowledge is the highest. Treasure a man can ever acquire is not money. Friends, let's stop emphasizing money, money, money. Wisdom is the, uh, uh, wisdom is the mother of money. Commit, let's commit ourselves to improve our lives, develop our lives, gaining more knowledge, gaining more wisdom. And let's also take care of our lives. We live in a dangerous times where most of the food available for us to eat are poisons. That's the truth. You have a responsibility to take care of your body. I know you already do that very well, but <laughs> we are speaking to everybody. Take care of your body. You owe God that. Don't put everything to your body. You owe God that. Your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. Be careful what you eat. Those days in Africa, it does not matter. Everything is natural. But today, things are not natural. We owe God duty to take care of our body. And in this generation, it's principally about what you eat. That is sweet to your tongue does not mean that it's good for your body. It can be sweet to your tongue and poison to your body. And God expects you to take care of your body. If you give a gift, a car gift to your friend, and the next day you see using it to pack more, pack dirty, even if it's a gift, you don't feel good about it. You'll be concerned. Look at that. That means that is the value the person placed on the gift that you have given. Take care of your body. You owe God that. You can't treat your body anyhow. And expect God to do something in your body. Glory to God. So let's number our days. Let's number, as we celebrate bad days upon bad days, let's remember to evaluate <clears throat> our growth in knowledge and understanding, in wisdom. Nobody is allowed to remain the same. We must be improving in knowledge. We must be improving in wisdom. We must be improving in understanding. Every year, ask yourself, what have you known this year that you did not know two years ago, that you did not know last year, especially spiritual truth, spiritual principles? That brings glory to God. That brings honor to God. Glory to God. A time of birthday is a time to re-examine our lives. How can I be better? How can I do this better? How can I serve God better? How can I know God better? How can I serve my neighbors and my fellow man better? Because at the end of the day, God will reward us for everything that we do. Glory to God. We thank God for your life. I pray the grace of God that has brought you this far will continue to carry you into the future. I pray that the rise up, come forward, let everybody go to the back, people that have come to celebrate, let's invite Brother John to come and lead us in thanksgiving and dance unto God, glory to God. Let's go behind so that he come and thank God and celebrate God with his song. Brother John, come and lead the song. Let us dance and celebrate, glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. Are we ready to give thanks to God this morning or this afternoon? Let us rejoice with our sister. Please let us ride up on our feet. 